hours after that fire started, and we're finally able to give you an up-close look at just how destructive it was to that trailer and to the truck. And if you start at the bottom, you can see the tires completely burned off. It's some of the hay still remaining on top. And look just behind, the metal completely melted on that truck. Earlier, this fire was a nightmare for drivers and for firefighters. He was waving out his window and I uh, pulled over. Darren Tidd might be the only one who's lucky. It could have been really disastrous if he's if he's driving down the road and, and, and he becomes overcome by the smoke. Minutes after he pulled over, his trailer was torched. I'm going to try and unhook my truck and save my truck, but it's, it's too late. Firefighters had trouble finding water. Just getting to it was difficult. The flames buried in hay. Fires uh, presenting a lot of problems for our firefighters. And then we came out and I saw black smoke. Just below the bridge at I-35, flaming hay fell and claimed two cars. I, I cried. Chrissy Miller in disbelief. It's, it's, it's awful. I love that car too. She just bought her Dodge in November. We're on vacation from kids, so yeah, and then this happened. He came downstairs and said, hey, well, your car's on fire. Ashley Emerson's car was nearing a milestone. That car and I had a personal relationship. I was going to get 300,000 miles on it. But what are the odds? of a highway hay fire. It's like getting struck by lightning or something. Uh, it happens. I'm not going to park under a bridge ever again. Looking at all this damage again, and it may be a miracle, but through all of this, fortunately, nobody was hurt. The police department and fire department say it could be a long time before they know why or how this hay caught on fire to begin with. Reporting live in Kansas City, William Joy, KMBC 9 News. I love the sun and fresh air. And Shondell Church ah. works seven days a week. I spent four and a half months uh, in jail and lost a lot uh, over a misdemeanor. Charged with a theft, he waited in jail more than a month before he even met his public defender. They just kept me there and kept me there and I didn't know what was going on. We could not get to his case in time and so he sat there. Michael Barrett is the head of Missouri's public defender system. He says Church's case isn't unusual. Balls get dropped and people stay in jail. After nearly five months, Church pled guilty to the theft. He says he didn't commit. It was like three days before Thanksgiving, you know, and they said, well, if you plead guilty, uh, we'll get you out here today. It seemed better than waiting six more months in jail to fight the case. You get tired, you know, you get wore down, and they don't feed you good. Church's case is now the focus of a federal lawsuit by the ACLU against the state. It claims piles of cases are stacking up in public defender's offices across Missouri. It's like Ethel and Lucy with a conveyor belt of chocolates. They just simply can't keep up. Last year, the state's 370 attorneys handled more than 80,000 cases. Some have upwards of 200 cases in a single day. Um, that's unconscionable. Nobody can do that. Barrett has trimmed the budget to the point where internet speeds can't download things like body camera video. We have to download it at night or on weekends when we're not competing against other computers operating in the office. Cases are handled for an average of just $355. That's the second lowest in the country. Only 1% of public defender cases even get a trial. Many, like churches, end with a plea. If you have access to lawyers, you receive one um, system of justice. And if you are poor, you have quite another. That should bother every American. Barrett is in a familiar position as a defendant in the ACLU lawsuit, but that hasn't stopped him from admitting the system's failures. Are Missourians being denied on some level a right to counsel? Yes, they're absolutely being denied. Losing the case would still be a win if the court forces the state to better fund its public defenders. If you can't help the people that you got in there, you need to have less people in there, you know, or hire more people to take care of those people. I mean, simple math. Unless the whole promise of America is a complete farce, people need to be treated equally under the law. William Joy, KMBC 9 News. I like going fast and I like having a throw. Dirt track racing isn't something you stumble upon. It's something you're born into. I'm feeling pretty confident. Hannah Frazee is headed to her fourth race ever. Hoping I don't wreck. And she's only 15 years old. I've never drove on the road, but I can drive on a track. From the time she entered the world, don't have that in. she's been part of this one. I've been going to the races since I was six months old. I wanted her to start doing it when she was 10, but her mom kind of shut me down on that. Her father, Ronnie, acts as crew chief. 
and coat. I taught her how to drive it in a hay field. And this is the 2,000 pound car that carries Hannah and her dream. Let's see if we can give some of these guys some competition. Most parents don't trust their teens to drive around the block, much less around a dirt track where wrecks happen at 80 miles an hour. She needs to set the car higher on the track and hit it, set it hard. In Hannah's first race ever, she qualified for the track's top event. I think a lot of people, whenever I first came out, thought I couldn't drive, but then I went out and proved them wrong. Her goal isn't just to belong. I want to be the first girl to win, I know that, at Lucas. As the lights go up and the sun goes down, she prepares to prove herself again. Just because you're a guy or a girl, it doesn't mean anything. Hey, you're just as good as them, do not be intimidated. To qualify, she'll need a top four finish in this race, a wrong twitch, and she can be done. I only look at my gauges during cautions because when you're flying down the front stretch, you don't have that much time. In lap one, she's hit. A few laps later, she spins out. She's pissed. Hannah returns, eyes burning. She had her visor up and something splashed up in her eyes. And there's less than 10 minutes for repairs before the next race. Hey, Ronnie, she's saying it's not wanting to turn. At the last minute, they try to fix her balance. There's a call to line up. Or the dance. And she's gone. A final race, a final pep talk. Be right up on them when you go around and take the green. I'm nervous before I get out there, but once I drop my visor and I'm on the track, it all goes away. And I'm focusing on the car in front of me. From the start, the dirt track is like ice. Early on, Hannah spins out and calls it a night. It wasn't what I planned, but it's racing. I'm really. real proud. I'm just as happy not finishing the, and making the B as if she'd have won the race. But she'll be back next week with the same car, the same team, the same dream. The very next week, Hannah did race again. This time, she qualified for the track's top race. She didn't win, but she still has the goal of accomplishing that one day. She was again the only woman or girl competing. William Joy, KNBC 9 News. That's why it is so unfair is because it's designed for pirates in the, in the 1700s. I mean, seriously. Civil asset forfeiture is an old law, and it's as complicated as its name. Most folks don't know about it. But you should. It allows law enforcement to take your money or car or anything you own, and you don't have to be charged with a crime. They found 350 pounds of marijuana that came out of Colorado. Sitting along I-70, the Gary County Sheriff's Department has a special focus on interstate busts. It's something to take pride in, and I'm very, very proud of these guys. It's not an easy process, but it is actually a simple concept. The Kansas Highway Patrol leads the state in asset forfeiture, taking in nearly $2 million every year. It's the criminals in their pocketbook. We view it as a tool. So to find out how effective that law enforcement tool is, we asked for how many guns and drugs they're taking. They said they didn't have those numbers and we'd have to pay $800 for them to find them. It's not all drug money. I mean, it just isn't. Attorney Chris Joseph has worked to reform the law. He says law enforcement finds a reason to search cars and take property. Strong odor of air freshener coming from a vehicle, very strong. It's, it's really up to an officer in the field making a judgment call on, on a highway about whether or not he believes you. And if he doesn't, he's keeping your money. Would you be okay with waiting for a dog to come run around your car? They're looking for drugs and they're looking for money and they're gonna be stopping cars with out-of-state plates. Gary County and KHP deny they target out-of-state cars. No, no. Uh, because that would be wrong, it'd be illegal. But we checked, and in the past three years, 90% of the Highway Patrol's significant seizures have been vehicles with out-of-state plates. I mean, it works, it makes sense. Uh, they, they, I mean, so to say that they don't do that seems silly because of course they do. Critics say Kansas law has a conflict of interest. Law enforcement must spend money they take on themselves. I don't think it incentivizes that it's that in, in any way, no. The amount of money that is used for salary, I believe, is very small overall. But records show roughly $2 million of seized money has gone to highway patrol salaries in the past three years. Most of the millions has paid for meals and hotels. They fund themselves in part from this. It's netted Gary County more than $1 million a year. Good old-fashioned police work is what it is. 
It's paid for new vehicles, a warehouse to keep seized cars, and it's also bought jet skis. You'd be surprised how many people score them a little bit of marijuana and go out to the lake and go smoke their marijuana. You know, we're using it for drug enforcement out there, too. They spent thousands on deer decoys from a local taxidermy shop they say is to stop poaching. I could not ask the taxpayers in Geary County to foot that bill. Uh, why not let the drug dealers do it? Junction City PD in Gary County has also brought in millions. We went line by line through expense reports and found they've bought everything from workout equipment to $600 break room TVs and a new coffee maker. I'm not going to say that we're policing for profit because that's not what we're doing. Problem is, what if it's not all drug money? What if it's just the guy that can't afford to defend it? Airports are home to goodbyes and reunions. The lady came up to me and handed it to me. She said she found it on the ground. Friday when KCI valet Dina Morley was handed a military doll with the photo of a girl and her father. Just love her little smile. She set it on her counter, hoping the family would come back. It's cute. <laughs> it's very cute. But when it was still there Monday, she took to Facebook. Our KMBC 9 post got nearly 8,000 shares. It kind of big time exploded. <laughs> a family friend saw it. That might be her. Tuesday. Look at that big old smile. The girl worried she'd said goodbye forever. Are you Catherine? Was reunited. Hi, how are you? Well, thank you. I think this belongs to you. The doll belongs to Catherine Whipple. My daddy doll. The six-year-old's father is deployed. He's far away. She dropped it, racing with her mom, an army captain, trying to catch a flight. She sleeps with it pretty much every night. Um, she Every night I have it. Shared with her three-year-old brother. I sneak in his t into his room in the middle of the night and I take it from him. <laughs> no one who shared that post could have known how much the doll or photo meant. We were at a daddy-daughter date at Chuck E. Cheese. Now she's holding it again. I would have had a very sad little girl. <laughs> Until she can hold her father. <laughs> William Joy, KMBC 9 News.